Hey there, it's Stephen Gardner. I have a special treat for you today. Rarely do big name senators go on shows like mine or podcasts, but today I have Senator Ron Johnson. We're going to go over what the heck is going on with the Biden administration, inflation, uh, the state of the union, and how he believes Republicans will be able to fix that. So please give this video a like and comment down below, but sit back and enjoy. Okay, I have joining me today Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin to talk about what's going on in the country and over in government. Uh, Senator Johnson, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, Stephen, happy to be on. So I know you're a Republican, but help me understand something. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said today that protecting the United States border is a threat to world democracy and plays right into the hands of Vladimir Putin of Russia and Xi Jinping of China. What, what is Senator Schumer talking about? You're not going to ask me to explain <laughs> Democrat thinking, are you? Uh, you know, Stephen, it's obvious that the open border policy of Democrats in this administration is a clear and present danger to America. And, and I use those words purposefully. Yeah, you know, my understanding was that the primary task of a president is to face, faithfully execute the laws and be concerned about our national security. We have instead a president whose open border policy is a clear and present danger. He caused the clear and present danger. And so what Republicans need to do is we need to make it our top priority because we have some leverage here with the administration looking for you know supplemental funding for wars and a bunch of other things. Uh, if they want that funding, they must secure the border. So it's not just about uh, changing the legislation because we have a president uh, that's lawless, that we know does not faithfully execute the laws, that has violated uh, Supreme Court orders, um, and he wants an open border. So if we approve any kind of funding for Ukraine, for example, it must be made contingent on the administration actually securing the border on hard benchmarks and hard metrics. So when you when you say that, uh, does does that mean just appropriating and sending more money or are you guys going to require some kind of policy change in order to make those effects? Well, you need both. But again, what I'm saying is the policy change, we can enact H.R. 2, which is a good piece of legislation. And this administration would ignore it. You know, President Biden is under court order to you know, initiate and, and actually implement a return to Mexico policy which worked. And that secured the border under President Trump within 12 months. But he's not implementing it. Again, he's he's not faithfully executing the laws or, in this case, following a court order. So no matter what language we uh, get in legislation, uh, we have to make any funding contingent on actually securing the border. So, again, I, I've got a proposal out there. Uh, let's say you started, we probably think it's about 250,000 people, migrants per, per month, are being dispersed through America, either encountered, processed and dispersed, or coming in detected as a gotaway. About 250,000 people. Uh, if you ramp that down over 12 months, and again, President Trump went from peak to trough in 12 months by doing things like return to Mexico, third safe country, other agreements with these uh, other countries, and just showing the world that no, we are going to secure the border as opposed to have an open border policy. It's entirely possible. You could ramp that down 20,000 people per month and make uh, $60 billion of uh, Ukraine funding contingent based on $5 billion a month. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a performance uh, measure, and you make the funding contingent on them actually hitting those performance benchmarks. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. I just met him last week, journalist Todd Benzman. He, he put forward this idea that once President Biden took the oath that it went out around the world, that if you were going to risk your life and risk your money and your investment of getting to America, that this was the time to do it, that that would be the greatest return on your money of getting in compared to trying to get in under a, a Donald Trump. Do you agree with that, that people are looking at this as this is my one shot of getting into the United States? Yeah, I mean, it's an obvious point. And if you actually take a look at the numbers, uh, President Trump hit his trough in about April of 2020 during the election year. That's right during the uh, presidential debates where each Democrat presidential candidate was saying that they were going to stop deportations and also offer free health care. And so you can see the numbers of single adults start creeping up 
until then Joe Biden got elected and then the border exploded uh, because he was very open about wanting an open border policy. They were not going to faithfully execute the laws. Uh, they, they won't even admit that they have a, a crisis or even a problem on the border. They call it a challenge, and they believe they're rising to the challenge by processing and dispersing illegal immigrants more rapidly, quickly. That That's what they view as success. And in his supplemental funding request, he's he's looking for something like $14 billion, not to secure the border, to increase the number of agents to more rapidly process and disperse more illegal immigrants. Well, that, that's interesting how they, you know, twist those words like, OK, we, we've been presented with a challenge. It's now the government's job to rise to that challenge. It, it sounds like a good thing. It, it like, you know, uh, we will put a man on the moon because it is hard. Right. We will get these immigrants into the country because it is hard. Uh, and, and yet the rest of us are looking back going, wait a minute, we're, we're being overrun. Our, our social safety net programs are being overrun. People are, you know, getting more money sometimes than people on Social Security. They're getting a, a place to stay in New York, a cell phone, three meals a day. Uh, there, there's many Americans that are living paycheck to paycheck. And from their point of view, it feels like these illegal immigrants are, are almost getting more of the American dream than they are after paying into a system for decades. Well, as you indicated in terms of Chuck Schumer's uh, uh, comments earlier, uh, Democrats were claiming, and of course they're backed up by their lapdog media uh, allies, that the Trump border policies were inhumane by by actually enforcing a border, by securing a border. That, that was in, inhumane. What is inhumane is this open border policy that is facilitating the multi-billion dollar business model of some of the most evil people on the planet. You know, migrants die in the desert. They are drowned. 50, what is it? 53 lost their lives in, in a tractor trailer. Uh, how do you think young women pay off their seven to $15,000 human trafficking fee? Well, they get put into sex trade business. Uh, they have things called either panty or taunting or rape trees that the human traffickers taunt uh, Customs Border Patrol agents with because just show, they'll put undergarments of the women they have raped or the girls they have raped basically telling CBP you can't do anything about it. I mean, this is grotesque. I mean, people are put into involuntary servitude. That is the inhumane policy is the open border policy that facilitates all of this. Yeah. Uh, now, I know I know you're over in the Senate, um, but there's, you know, just from reading the comments and as I've covered these stories on my YouTube channel, there's a lot of confusion around why Republicans over in the House were against impeaching Alejandro Mayorkas. Do, do you understand that? Is he just part of the problem and, and they figure whoever replaces him is just going to walk right in and keep the same policies going? Help, help my reader or help my listeners understand that. Well, first of all, understand the vast majority of Republicans in the House wanted to impeach the Secretary of Homeland Security. It was just a handful. I can't remember eight, the number. I think it was eight. Eight. So you have to ask them. I mean, it completely baffles me. I've been calling for his impeachment uh, really since the start of this administration because he's not faithfully executing the laws. By the way, I'd also impeach Anthony Blinken because he lied to our investigators about never emailing Hunter Biden. That was a bold-faced lie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm in Utah, so I, I'm, I'm stuck with uh, Mitt Romney for you know another year. But how insulting is it to uh, a, a senator like yourself or voters for someone like Senator Mitt Romney to publicly say, I'm going to vote Democrat next time, uh, even though people that overwhelmingly voted him into office wanted Donald Trump as president. It it goes, it flies right in the face of, of his voters. It makes no sense to me. Well, again, that's uh, one person and one person's opinion. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Senator Romney has kind of shown his constituents kind of where he stands on most issues and they're not particularly in agreement with it, which is why he's probably not running again. Yeah. He says it's time to pass the baton, but I think he knows that he was not going to uh, be given a, another opportunity. Um, you, you have been a, uh, a David and Goliath uh, fighter for, you know, bringing justice to Dr. Anthony Fauci and the uh, draconian, uh, measures that were used against us in the COVID lockdowns. Do you think that there's ever going to be any kind of justice or recognition from the government that they went too far, that if, if this happens again, that they would go a different route? 
or are, is, are, is the, gov the government just keep moving forward? Well, first of all, understand how many people are in complicit are complicit in what happened. Uh, the basic human, human tendency is to never admit you are wrong. And so what we're up against, I always call them the COVID cartel, and that's the Biden administration, our federal health agencies, who are completely captured by big pharma, who have also captured the media and the big tech social media giants. So that, that's the COVID cartel. Uh, there are so many people who lost their lives needlessly lacking early treatment because the COVID cartel uh, sabotage early treatment in favor of the vaccine. And then they covered up the vaccine injuries. And so, so the, the body count is way too high. And so these individuals not only will never admit they're wrong, but they have the power to make it very difficult to prove them wrong. But from my standpoint, accountability starts with exposure and more and more of their wrongdoing is being exposed. Uh, people have to be looking for it though. I, I got an advanced copy of RFK Jr.'s new book. He lays out a lot of detail. Rand Paul has a book where he pretty well tells the story. There have been multiple very long format uh, magazine articles, you know, laying out the cover up pretty much engineered by people like Jeremy Farrar and Anthony Fauci and the Ralph Barrick and the Peter Zatzics of the world. So the, 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 to me, it's been obvious since 2020, this was a man-made virus. It's been obvious that Anthony Fauci uh, was in cover up mold in late January, early February, as soon as his emails, even the heavily redacted emails were, were released, this has been obvious to me. But you've got the complicit and compliant and corrupt media that is backing up Democrats and backing up the the you know federal health agencies and the, the, the other members of the COVID cartel. So it, it's going to be difficult, but the truth is getting out. More and more people are opening up their eyes and you need to look no further. In fact, that the uptake of the of the latest vaccine booster is really quite low. Yeah, people are like, uh, no, I'm I'm on my fifth or sixth shot. I'm okay now. Uh, final question. I, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, do you think that Joe Biden is going to actually run for president, or do you think uh, as we get further into 2024, they're going to find a way for him to graciously bow out and allow somebody else to take his place? Yeah, I've been saying for quite some time. I I think it's almost zero probability that he'll be their candidate. Uh, you know, Democrats have no idea how to run a country, run an economy, uh, keep a nation safe, but they do know how to cling to power. And they understand that uh, if somebody's not very electable, they'll throw that individual under the bus uh, like nobody's business. And my guess, that's exactly what they do to President Biden. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got Gavin Newsom and Ron DeSantis going on Fox News to debate. Uh, one is trying to prop himself up as the plan B of Joe Biden. The other is trying to unseat the popularity of Donald Trump. We'll see how that ends up going. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I, I really value your input. I, I appreciate so much for those that maybe don't know you because they're not from Wisconsin. Uh, you, you fought very hard for American freedom. You fought for COVID freedom and uh, you're fighting for this country every day. And I, I thank you for that. And I want to thank you again for taking time to come on my show. I appreciate the opportunity. Stay well. Thank you.